Hello there. If you're in radiology or any other medical specialty with night work, you probably heard of the work one week and then have two weeks off deal. On the surface, this deal sounds too good to be true. So let's discuss the pros and cons to see if this type of work and schedule is the one right for you. I'm an MSK radiologist, but for the past year and a half, I've been doing ER radiology, working seven days in a row and then having 14 days off to recover. So first things first, the time that you're not working is called recovery time and for good reason. The days that you're working at the ER are mostly during hours nobody likes to work the night and going through volumes sometimes three times as much as radiologists that work during normal hours. You will sure have a lot of free time, but make no mistake that you'll be mentally and physically drained after a shift. Not all institutions have exactly the same schedule for ER radiologists. Some places the work is strictly overnight, some strictly during the evening, and some others a combination of day work, evening work, and overnight work. Some places work strictly one week on and two weeks off, and others a combination of days that at the end of the year it will equal to one week on and two weeks off. There are some places that will even have you working long 12 hour shifts for seven days in a row and then giving you three weeks off. Personally, I have enjoyed working at the ER and during my recovery time, I rest, but I also cover some shifts as an MSK radiologist for extra money, which sounds extremely appealing and I have to admit is nice. However, I also have to admit that this type of work and schedule is not for everyone. So first, let's start with the reasons this might be a good fit for you. Number one, if you're able to sleep during the day without constant use of medication. In my personal experience, this is the most important factor to enjoy ER shift work. If you can't sleep during the day, your week is going to be miserable and you feel very unhealthy at the end of the week. I personally will fall asleep as soon as I get home from work but will wake up in three to four hours after I fall asleep with, as you might expect, not enough sleep and rest. Number two, you are a planner. If you're one of those people that plans vacation and activities a year ahead, this job is for you. You'll be able to make the most of all the recovery time and feel like you're not missing much in life. As you might expect, changing shifts in ER, especially at the last minute, can be difficult given the nature of our schedule. Number three, you're single or you're married to a spouse that can accommodate to your schedule. In ER radiology, you have a lot of recovery time, but for the most part, this time off is when most other people are working. So if you have this idea in your mind that with all this free time, you're going to travel the world, you better understand that you may be able to do it, but it will be by yourself or with people that have similar schedules to you. If you have a family in ordinary working hours, you'll be spending lots of your time by yourself. Number four, you like money and believe in the work hard, play hard mantra. With all that recovery time, you could do a lot of extra work or locum tenens, which is actually very well compensated. You'll be working lots, but you'll be making lots of money. Number five, you enjoy working by yourself. Most of the ER work is done by yourself, either at home or at work. Working those hours that nobody likes means few people at work to interact with. Overnight in particular gets very lonely as you're working when everyone else is sleeping and sleeping when everybody else is working. Number six, you're in the need for large blocks of free time. Many international radiologists choose this schedule to give them enough time to visit their native countries, which often are on the other side of the world. With planning, accommodating one continuous month of time off is pretty easy to do. Number seven, you don't care much about involvement in academics. Mm, now don't get me wrong, you can be very academically oriented in the ER if you choose to do so and spend your recovery time in academic activities that are not monetarily compensated by definition. But truth be told, most folks that work overnight usually stay away from academic endeavors. 
It's kind of an ER thing. You work really hard for a week and then the next two weeks you want to be left alone. Now let's talk about the reasons ER shift work may be a bad fit for you. Number one, let's talk about it again, insomnia. Can you sleep during the day? You sure don't want to be a druggie those days. Lunesta, Ambien, Benadryl, you don't want that. Number two, you have young children. Not many think about this, but ER shift work includes a third of the weekends of the year, and when you're working, you're pretty much useless. You're gonna miss out. The weeks that you're working, you miss plenty of activities of your children, including sports, cool activities, and others. It's a price to pay, but for some, the price is too high. Number three, you're not a good planner and like to enjoy spontaneous activities or short notice gatherings. Family life happens, and sometimes it happens very fast. With ER shift work, it's sometimes difficult or impossible to switch shifts so you can accommodate for a short notice trip or activity. If you're a planner, this won't bother you much. But if you're a spruce of the moment type of person, this will frustrate you. Number four, if you have to travel to do your ER shift. Many folks work for departments in a city that they don't live and travel to work. If you have to travel to work, it will get expensive and you'll waste plenty of your recovery time in an airport or a plane. And that's not cool. Number five, you like to be involved in the administration of your department and institution. Not being available because you're sleeping during the day or because you're off can really make it hard to be involved in administration. You know, everybody wants the chief to answer the emails and phone calls and pay attention to you and solve your problems. So you have to be available all the time, really. Number six, you like procedures. There are not many of those in ER. Some departments will have you do some basic procedures like lumbar punctures and emergency barium studies. Are those procedures? Hmm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but that is the exception anyways. And you'll be doing them in the background of a fast growing reading list that never stops attacking you, really. You can barely go to the bathroom sometimes. Anyways, there you have it. If you're considering a job in ER, be honest with yourself and your expectations. While the job is extremely fast paced and interesting, and the large amount of recovery time is well, I have to admit, extremely appealing and nice, the job is not really for everyone. It's one of those things that you either love it or you hate it. So if you're considering doing ER work, make sure you are gonna be in the loving side. Thanks and good luck.